Indie titles have been reviving our favorite genres for some time now, and Shovel Knight is a prime example of an indie game done right. Although released in 2014, Shovel Knight's 8-bit graphics will make you think that you've dusted off your old NES and you're playing a game from that era. Beyond retro graphics, music, and an overall retro aesthetic, Shovel Knight shines in its intense level design. There's no run button, so your speed in the air matches your speed on the ground. There's no need to gain momentum for jumps, like in Mario, Sonic, or DK. With that being said, I would say there's a bit more emphasis on platforming compared to Mega Man games. Shovel Knight also does his best Scrooge McDuck impression by using his shovel as a pogo stick to bounce off of enemies and other hazards throughout each level. The developers of Shovel Knight took a lot of pages out of Nintendo's book. The first level teaches the gamer the controls very well, and in an old-school way, not in a Call of Duty, press this button to throw a grenade kind of way. The Scrooge McDuck pogo stick mechanic is a very important part of this game, so the game forces you to learn it really early on in the first level. Within the first 30 seconds of the first level, there's this breakable platform below you, and the gamer is forced to figure out how this new mechanic can break certain things. The next section of the level has a bubble in between yourself and a higher level that you can't reach from a normal jump. You can pogo stick your way to that platform, and if you fail, there's no pit for you to fall into. They save that kind of frustration for you later in the level once you learn the mechanics. That's a very important aspect of level design, learning how the mechanics of that level work before actually challenging you. Once you feel comfortable though, the levels intertwine many different mechanics you've learned into one. Each level is distinct from one another and introduce fresh mechanics for you to learn and grow throughout the level. I never felt too much repetition from a gameplay standpoint due to how different every level was. The combat in the game is pretty straightforward other than pogo stick stomping on enemies Mario style. You can also just hit your opponent straight up with a shovel. Shovel Knight also has its own form of exploration and it is a big part of the game. Each level is filled with hidden areas, kind of like Donkey Kong Country. If you explore, you can find hidden sections where you find collectibles like music notes which give you more currency which can then be used to upgrade your health or magic. Speaking of magic, Shovel Knight learned spells throughout his adventure. Spells like fireballs, invincibility for a short period of time, and this green thingy that just goes bananas. I used fireballs for most of my playthrough because they were simple and hey, I like it simple. I'm a guy who learned how to play video games through the Mushroom Kingdom, so this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It also costs the least amount of magic, so for boss battles, I would go heavy on the fireballs. Boss battles were adrenaline rushing experiences, and a huge plus in Shovel Knight. Each boss brings its own challenge that you have to figure out, and the rush that you get when you get that final blow on your opposition is an awesome feeling. There aren't a certain number of lives in Shovel Knight, but when you die, you lose bags of money. You can obtain this money if you go back to the spot that you died, kind of like when you die in Dark Souls and you drop your XP. Some of the levels can be pretty long, but they're well placed with checkpoints, so although death may come easy, it's not that big of a deterrent thanks to no lives and checkpoints. If you're feeling ballsy, you can actually destroy your checkpoint, which rewards you with extra money, but if you die, you have to start at your most recent checkpoint you didn't break, or even at the beginning of the level. This risk-reward method is great if you're a beast at this game and want an even greater challenge. Indie games are underrated for a reason. They don't get a lot of ad dollars, so naturally, most people won't hear about them. Shovel Knight is a fantastic game, and I recommend it for any fan of the old-school platformer. It's a game that takes you back to an era, but with such a large emphasis on good controls and great level design. Nostalgia is not even close to the reason why Shovel Knight is such a fantastic game. If you buy the Treasure Trove version, it has free DLC, which has even new characters with their own mechanics. I'll review those games separately, but let me know in the comments your thought on Shovel Knight and where it ranks upon the top indie platformers.